I'm Nathaniel Barrett, president of Agritech. I'm joined here today with Dr. Frank Abrahamson. Um, Dr. Frank, um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, so my name is Frank Abrahamson. Um, originally, when I first got involved with Agritech, um, I was, well, I am a livestock extension specialist and I was working with small producers all over the state of Alabama. And I kept hearing the term Agritech, Agritech, Agritech. Um, and, you know, was, I wasn't sure, I've never heard of this approach to things and more of a sustainable approach. Um, so I decided that we would run a demonstration. Um, we actually ran a demonstration just um, on advanced cow at four gallons per acre. What were you wanting to gain from it? Well, everybody claims that this product, you know, everybody claims there's going to be a uh, an increase in pH is what all the producers were telling me. Um, and I've never heard this. I've always been told that there's only one way to do things. Right. Um, so this was a chance for me to kind of reach outside the comfort zone and ensure the people that I work with, you know, the, or the people that I'm working with that, you know, they're, they're not wasting their money. This, this product is effective or it's not effective. Mm -hmm. Sure. So let's talk a little bit about what you did. Okay. Uh, so basically last year, you took three different pieces of ground, a yes. little bit different soil types in each, a little bit different conditions. Uh, and what exactly, you know, you were working off of recommendations that were put together by Agritech. Yes. Um, based off of current soil condition as well as the farming habit. And so let's kind of walk through these and you can kind of just tell me, you know, what you were recommended. I, I wasn't involved right. in any of this. Um, so, you know, walk me through kind of what what you did and, and why, and then also let's kind of go through what you saw throughout the year. So we were recommended to put out four gallons per acre of advanced cow. Okay. Um, and uh, this was based off uh, one initial soil test and curiosity of me personally to see if we could get that increase in pH. And you know, to get that increase in pH, um, we would, you know, do the before and after samples and kind of see how this is affected. Um, but we do know also there's a strong relationship between Base saturation and soil right. pH. Right. Um, and, and so, you know, one thing we look at is pH is an important indicator. Oh, for sure. Um, it, it's an easy indicator. It's easy for a farmer to get a soil test, see what his pH is. Really, at the end of the day, you know, what we try to educate people on is there's more to it. There's more to it. There, right. Really, what you're looking at, and, and a lot of people haven't even heard this term, is base saturation. Uh, to put it quick and simple, you know, when you talk about cation exchange capacity, the total holding capacity of the soil for cations, uh, we want to see a certain ratio there. And when that ratio gets off or when one of those gets low, that's when the low pH comes in. Right. But in reality, what we're working on and what we're trying to manage is certain levels in the soil. And, and those being, we want calcium primarily, you know, it takes up the majority of that space and it needs to be about 65 to 75% of total soil composition, sure. right? And, and so when you have a balanced pH, that's usually either means, hey, there's no hydrogen base saturation, right. or or you know really what we're shooting for is under ten percent hydrogen. Right. That's when we have you know a full tank so to speak. For sure. um, and so without getting too far into detail, of course you know when it comes down to it, the reason calcium is such a big point, and, and you know this too. I'm not teaching you anything here, but the reason calcium is such a big point is because calcium is a conductor. Calcium carries a double positive charge most of the nutrients that are trying to get to the plant rely on what are called cation channels in the soil and in the plant for nutrient transportation and allocation. Calcium creates that highway in the ground, it creates that transportation system, as well as helping with overall soil conditioning, you know, making sure that there's proper water levels and, and air in the soil. So looking at these soil samples, you know, we're looking at pH. We're also looking at base saturation, but one thing we all know is when you get your pH where it's supposed to be, we see an increase as well in available nutrients more often than not. Oh, so sure. let's kind of jump into these things and you can kind of walk me through each of these samples, the before and after and the differences that you saw as well as throughout the growing season. Kind of the right, so first we, you know, we can uh, start with, I guess, just the observations that we saw and um, we planted uh, some winter annuals um, all in each of the three plots. Uh, that way we could kind of have a generalized idea of what it would be similar across Sure. And um, actually, on the the third treatment, uh, we we had the best growth on um, the the third yeah, application um, here. Plot three. So let's start with the first one. 
um, had a you know difference in pH of, right. of two tenths of a percent. Now right. that soil wasn't really in and a bad too much in need. Yeah, and yeah. too much need. Really, what we are focusing on there is uh, soil health. Right. Um, from from my understanding, yes. is that correct? And yes. so all of these plots had 100 pounds of triple 15 fertilizer, yes. is that right? that's a fact. Okay, so basically, the interesting thing I noticed on this is there was an increase in phosphorus and potassium on this. Now, the phosphorus increased about 50 pounds per acre post-application, and you had an increase of about 58 pounds per acre of potassium. Right. Now, we only applied 15 pounds of each. Can you help me understand why we're seeing such a jump in these? Is it just seasonal? Is it just the ground changing? as it you know just so uh, help me understand that i think there's a lot of nutrients that are already in the soil and uh once we start getting things more right that a lot of these unavailable nutrients then become available to the plant right um so we'll see this increase in available um, nutrients and right and we see it even more so in the second one where we had a starting uh PPM reading of 50, which means we got about 100 pounds of available potassium right. in the soil. And after, you know, when you took these follow-up soil samples, we have 156 PPM. Right. Right. That's 200 pounds. And we right didn't now, put out that much. No. 15 pounds, yeah. am I right? Uh, of potassium. I was applied here and, and a massive difference. And so really what you're saying is that there's a lot of nutrients there, but having those cation channels, having that proper soil health, is the only way we can really use them. Yes, I, that, that says it perfectly. But I, I think it also kind of brings us to a question of, to me, this this isn't gonna make much sense. Sure. A lot of people are thinking, I didn't put that in there. How am I getting that out? Um, sure. So we should all kind of be scratching our head and figuring out, what well, was this a product of applying advanced, advanced cow? The calcium product is increasing the other things. You know, uh, that's something I'm, you know, not aware of, but I think that is something we have to look, look into or... Right, learn into. more on. Yeah. Because, yeah, uh, we do know, you know, Iowa State did a study and showed the efficiency of fertilizer. Yeah, it's Texas uh, A&M too. Texas 100% A&M as well. well. Right. Uh, and, the, and that's how we know that, you know, pH is such an important factor. And it's interesting seeing, you know, how that compounds. Yeah, and I think, uh, I think all too often, not to go down some rabbit hole, but I think we worry about MPK and people have often forgot about calcium. Right. And in fact, it has, I mean, it improves, it can displace hydrogen, right. improve nitrogen utilization, soil compaction. I mean, the list goes on um, of the positive benefits of calcium. Right, so let's move on to this third plot, the one that you wanted to jump to earlier. That was really kind of the problem child starting out. Right. Uh, tell me a little bit of history on that ground. Was that yeah, so piece this, of ground? Why was it so different? So this is a new piece of ground. Um, it was recently cleared, uh, probably a year prior to that, you know, we ripped up all the stumps. Um, the other two grounds were never really taken care of and we decided uh, we needed to graze some cows. So we put them out there. Um, we planted some winter forages. I, I don't remember right, it was Kosaki oats, rye grass, and crimson clover, I believe. Okay. Um, so we put them and this also got 100 pounds of triple 50. Yes, all of them yeah. all of them did, so we could keep that uniform. So this one's a little different in the sense that this one, the starting base saturation on these was, soil tests... Was very low. Very, very low. Yes, and, and we 23, even, is that, am I right? 23.6% yeah. base saturation. And what are we normally looking for on the base saturation as far as optimal level? I would say 65 to 75 65 to 75 And so with a piece of ground like this, is it possible to get to that point in one year? No, I don't even think that uh, the pH could be fixed with traditional methods that quick. Um, right. that, that, that's going to take time, um, time and time again, whether you're plowing the lime in or whatever it is. Right. Um, but, you know, this was this was a, a tough situation. Right. Yeah. Them. You know, I, I know from personal experience, when I see a piece of ground that's that low, that's in that poor condition, I take kind of a two-year approach you know which is what we're really looking to do is raise base saturation 20 right. to 25 percent a year right and so in most soils they're still kind of healthy right it's it's a it's increases efficiency right but you know i don't want to waste product less wasted money doesn't make sense uh now with most soils you know you find low ph it's uh 50 55 percent you know base saturation when you get this low um you know that four gallon rate what we're really looking for is not only just 
a difference in pH, but we really want to see that base saturation come up. And so typically with cation exchange capacity that's under 10, we expect uh, advanced cal or pro-cal light to raise the soil base saturation about 5% per gallon. Right. Uh, and so tell me a little bit about uh, that piece of ground, what was applied to it, and then the difference that we saw. Yeah, so it was treated the same as the others. We did the, um, we actually put the 15, triple 15 out at 100 pounds per acre prior to do the advanced cal application. Okay. Um, there was really no response on, on that last plot to any of the fertilizer. Um, I think we should note though that, or bring it up, that after we did the advanced cow application, there was an immediate response to the fertilizer that we had put out. Um, but I think we fell right where you were just talking as far as uh, the base saturation improvement with four gallons of Nitro Max. Um, of advanced cow? Or, yeah, I'm advanced cow. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, and, and so, uh, starting and ending soil test here, saying we started out at that 23.6, and our goal was basically to raise it about 20% yes. for gallon rate. And so, it looks like at the end of the year, when these follow up soil samples were taken, we, we saw about a 21.5% increase in base saturation of calcium. Yes. Uh, so, just a little bit over, but pretty much what we were shooting oh, for. Oh, for sure. Uh, and so what are we going to do with this piece of ground moving forward? Um, we're going to do another application of advanced cow. Um, see if we can bring it up more. And I, my suspicions are uh, moving forward that if we can bring the calcium base saturation up a little bit more, um, I, I think the pH is going to correct itself. Um, yeah, it looks like the, it's already starting to. Yeah, we saw the increase quite a bit. Uh, in the other two plots, and I think that's exactly what we'll see in the third plot. Uh, well, that is very interesting. I appreciate your time in explaining this. Um, and so, after doing these trials, um, you know, these, these all happened last year. You weren't affiliated with us at the time. Right. Now, you know, you've seen some of the effectiveness here that right. these products can have. Really, the approach we're taking is not a traditional one. Oh, for sure. Uh, it's very new to a lot of people and it can be very uncomfortable. Um, but when you really get into the science and you look at it, you can see the effectiveness. And so, from that, um, it, you've you've come on and, and become a part of the team, really. Yes. And so, you know, is it purely out of curiosity? I mean, what what made you want to join the team and be a part of this? Um. So the decision to come and kind of be a part of this company and kind of serve as like a scientific consultant um, was the way that um, we're doing things in an untraditional way, a more envir environmentally sustainable way. And the willingness to help people that have small or considered small producers, whether it's row crops, vegetables, sure. or or cattle, um, I think it's important that we try to improve their sustainability and bottom line of their operation. And that's something that Agritech does that I don't think any other company does. And if there's a way that I can help to make this even better, that's what caught my eye. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you here and appreciate your help. Yeah, and I enjoy it. Great. Um, Great. Well, if you guys have any more questions or you'd like to see some of the information that we're talking about in these trials, um, please feel free to reach out to us or get on our website. Um, tell us a little bit more just before we wrap up about the research we're doing. Yeah, so I would like to say, um, you know, numbers don't lie. I think mm -hmm. that's important that we, we establish that. Um, I know that science has this conventional way of doing things and some people really think that's the only way it can be done. but. What we've done recently here at Agritech is we've looked at several before and after samples um, that have been collected as far back as 2016. Um, most of these products um, that I, I looked at, um, actually all of them, because I threw out the advanced cow, because there was more pro cow uh, that soil samples. Sure. Um, we analyzed several, several soil samples to see just how this pH changed. We also looked at how the calcium base saturation changed, and then those other strange things that just don't make sense as like phosphorus and potassium. Right. If we're putting out calcium, how are these things changing? Sure. Um, so we did an analysis, as I said, back to 2016, and we found that there was about a 0.8% increase in pH overall. And this was a lot of samples with a really, really small standard error, wow. um, which kind of speaks to, you know, how close, all, you know, how, how related all the numbers were, how close all the numbers were together. Um, and I hope as we move forward, we continue to grow this database for sure. Um, to continue to prove to people that this is a viable option. Right, and we encourage you know everyone we, we speak with you know 
understand your soil first and foremost. And though the best way to start out is do soil test. Right. You know, um, figure out what's really wrong. Figure out you know where do you currently stand, and, and work from that point. And figuring out how potassium and phosphorus increase when we didn't put any out in these situations, I think that that's like a world-changing answer. That are sure. definitely uh, environment a more environmentally sustainable option for the small producer that could potentially result in even saving more money. Awesome, fantastic.